Hey everyone! When it comes to ADC, one of the biggest problems every player faces is that they're way weaker than they should be at all stages of the game due to not knowing where to be and when. The result of this is the constant complaint that you'll see all over the internet from ADC players, not getting strong enough in time to carry the game because once they leave lane, the enemy is too fed to deal with. ADCs are almost entirely item reliant to actually do anything. If you fall behind in gold, you're essentially useless until you get that gold. So what do ADC players Diamond and Below do to deal with this? Well, they gravitate towards any teamfight possible in the hope of getting some random kills. As we know by now, for those of you who follow Skillcapped, seeking teamfights is a fast track way to coin flip the outcome of the game. Teamfights often have way too many variables to predict their outcome, thus staying at 50% win rate and not climbing. Today's guide is designed to isolate exactly where ADCs in Diamond and Below go wrong, with clear takeaways you can walk away with so that you can guarantee you get fed when making the correct decisions and start carrying your games. This guide is broken down with gameplay from Diamond, Gold, and Silver starting with Vayne in Gold Elo. As we jump into it, let's kick things off by testing your macro knowledge. Vayne has just respawned and she's 5 and 2 to Caitlyn's 1 and 4. If you were Vayne, where would you go? This was a purposefully difficult question to answer and is designed to get you thinking about the main takeaway that we want you to walk away with from this guide. What value do I get from the path I'm taking? If Vayne goes from here to mid to catch the next wave, Vygar could easily just take the wave before she even gets there. As an ADC, you never want to share farm. You want to get your items and start carrying as soon as possible. If Vayne were to go bot, it'd take a really long time and her wave is pushing up far into enemy territory. And top isn't really an option with her Vladimir up there still laning. It's starting to feel like Vayne has no options. She needs to buy time to see what Vygar does. So where should she go? If you answered this correctly the first time we asked, then you're smurfing. Vayne should path towards Krugs and Red to keep up farm while she waits for a better option. It's efficient moves like this which keep great players fed and strong way faster than average players. Let's see what actually happens. So Vayne paths mid towards a Viger who's taking the wave. Then she stands around, practically AFK, while Viger recalls, then gets to farm the next wave. If she'd pad to Krugs and red buff during this time, she could have gained around 250 gold, almost a kill's worth, plus experience, and then pad mid once she's seen Vygar recalling to collect a solo wave. That is a huge difference. Thinking back to the key question, what value do I get from this path? When looking at mid lane, it was uncertain if Vayne could get value from going straight there, and Vygar did end up farming another wave. That's why farming jungle camps as a stalling move was the best thing to do, so she's being paid while waiting to collect information. But what if Vygar stayed in lane after that wave he killed and didn't recall? That'd leave us with three suboptimal options. Vlad top, Vygar mid, and the wave fully pushing bot. With no camps around to farm while stalling for more time, the correct play would be to path bot and look for a play. If Bane moved up and camped this brush, for example, she could look for an opportunity to 1v1 a side laner and break this game wide open. If she grouped mid with Vygar, had he not recalled, at best they could maybe get mid tower and get shared gold, which doesn't compare to the potential of 1v1ing a side lane. With Vayne now farming mid lane with Caitlyn, Vygar is returning mid. Vayne's now at risk of sharing farm, which will weaken Vayne's path to snowballing. Where do you think she should go? We hope you all said to go bot here. With Renekton side laning and pushing, Vayne could pressure him and keep up in solo farm. But let's see what happens. I think we're starting to get the picture. Vayne spent 55 seconds from when she should have went bot to stay grouped with her team and share a wave between four people, then sticks around to use their Rift Herald on mid tower, netting 100 gold each. When we put it like this, it's blatantly obvious how inefficient this is from Vayne and pointless for her to be here. However, we know for a fact that if you look at your own replays, you'll see similar inefficiencies due to your own poor macro choices. With active thinking about the potential value from the paths you're taking, we're sure that optimal choices will start to become obvious in your own games in any situation. I quickly want to mention that if you're not signed up to Skillcapped, then you're missing out big time. We just hit over 800 guides on our website, which are the best on the internet. With challenger-tailored courses we've spent hundreds of hours perfecting, you're sure to improve. 
We're so confident in this that you can see what rank we think you'll hit before signing up for the long-term plan. If you don't hit that rank while actively using Skillcapped, then you'll be eligible to claim a full refund. So there's literally no risk. Let's hop over to another example. During this game, the Sivir is doing quite well. She is farming up a storm on the top side of the map until she eventually recalls to spend her gold. Afterwards, she correctly paths mid. She has a Mordekaiser and a Zed on her team, both champions who like to sit in a side lane a lot of the time. We want you to remember this moment. We'll come back to it, but for now, let's watch what happens. Okay, despite her complete int, her team still comes out ahead 3 for 4 kills. It stands to reason that if she hadn't run right into the enemy team, that her team would have won the fight even harder. Knowing that, going back to this moment, do you still think it was correct for Sivir to rotate bottom? Okay, that's actually not even a question. The fact that we're asking you that means that we disagree with her. But the why is what's important here. We believe that Sivir should just keep pushing mid. The enemy team seeing this is likely all rotating bot lane. Ask yourself why you're going bot in these situations. Is it to team fight? Rotating over to team fight is the equivalent of those Civil War reenactments, just a bunch of musket men single file lining up to shoot each other. You're basically just handshaking with your opponent and hoping you shoot better than them in that fight. We really want you to stop thinking about playing the game fairly. The game shouldn't look fair. When we watch our Smurfs play in low elo, does it look fair? Does it look like the enemy team can fight back? No, they're just constantly creating stressful situations for the enemy team. You don't want handshake and fights, you want chaos. Let's go back to the Sivir game. Let's imagine what happens if she pushes mid here. The enemy team are all bot lane, just think about it. Think about those times that you're fighting at Baron and the enemy Fiora is at your inhibitor towers. You panic, your team panics, no one commits to the call, you all realize you've messed up. Then everyone has their own ideas as to how to salvage the terrible situation that you're in. Then you all get aced, lose Baron, and your inhibitor. You need to abuse the fact that there is no voice comm in League of Legends. The second the enemy team is fighting your teammates in bot lane and you see, that's when the panic will set in, and you're at their inhibitor towers. You can actually influence the fight way more by not being there by literally just abusing the fact that your opponents are human beings and are bound to make mistakes under pressure. Not only is there immediate value by Sivir staying mid, but she has an incredible pivot option for mid as well. If she sniffs out that the enemy team is rotating back toward her, she can just dip back to the enemy blue side jungle, check for camps to steal, and make her way top lane to continue pressuring and hard farming. The thing I really want to stress is that this mid lane call is guaranteed value, with plenty of control over the outcome. By going bot lane, she's just playing Candyland, a complete RNG game. As we move towards the end of today's guide, we'll see how all of the issues that we've discussed work their way up to Diamond Elo as we take a look at Kai'Sa. Let's run through what actually happens in the scenario and all agree it's her teammate's fault until we take a closer look. Kai'Sa is about to farm bot, but Syndra follows her and takes her wave. Kai'Sa pulls back and paths towards mid lane, where Echo then clears her wave. Great. Then she goes into the jungle where a fight breaks out. She loses her life and mid tower. She does get a shutdown, but again, that was totally left to chance. So what should she do? Wherever she went to get solo farm, her teammates inted her intentions. So Syndra taking the first wave was totally out of her control. It's with Kaisa's next choice where she can take some blame. By pathing towards mid lane with the Syndra, the only possible outcome is to again share gold in the mid lane. If she stayed bot side, she could wait to farm the next wave by herself, guaranteeing real value. Nothing would be left to chance there. With her instead going mid lane, it prompted Muno to path directly bot off his recall. This almost certainly would not have happened had Kaisa been there when Mundo decided where to go. So often if you claim a space and commit to it, your team will move around you, leading to far easier solo farm situations for yourself. Alright, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Are you guilty of making horrifically inefficient macro choices? Let us know in the comments below. We hope this helped and we'll catch you in the next video.